So apparently, Intel's new CPU design has been robbing us of precious, precious performance. So a little bit of background information. The Intel Independent Loading Mechanism, I believe it's called, is this thing here. Um, it's the latch that secures the CPU into the socket, right? Now, ever since the LGA 1700 CPUs have been out, the extreme overclocking guys have kind of noticed an issue with this socket. Okay, so basically this is your IHS here. Okay, kind of imagine this being, uh, oh my God, this is bad. <laughs> imagine this being your top down view, okay? Uh, this is the little arrow pointing like that. Now this will be your side view, okay? Like this, like this, and here is your tab. Okay, now this is your latching mechanism, okay? Kind of around it like this. Now, this latches on like this, right? This latches on like this. And these two points here on the IHS clamp down to hold the CPU in the socket, right? Now, when you actually do this, now, according to the extreme guys, when you apply clamping pressure in the center of the CPU like this, over time with some heat cycles and whatnot, the center will develop a little bit of a groove like this, right? And the center where the actual die is, the actual CPU die is in the center like this. Now, when the groove forms, the thermal paste will collect in the top center like this. This will all be thermal paste. Now, does this actually matter for daily use or does this only matter for liquid nitrogen, right? So when you actually have this much thermal paste collecting in the center like this, that can create problems for, for liquid nitrogen, right? Thermal paste can actually freeze and crack during benchmarking sessions. So this is no good, right? But I mean, for regular users like you and I, does this actually matter, right? Well, we will find out. And for your points of reference, this is a 10th gen CPU, and this is a 12th gen CPU. So you can see how this one is much longer up and down, right? So when you clamp in the middle, kind of flexes the IHS a little bit, right? So on paper, this kind of does make sense, right? But I've been kind of telling my community to more or less not worry about it because the needs of extreme overclockers are not necessarily the same needs as the regular overclocker slash gamer, which is what we are, right? Those guys are concerned about liquid nitrogen metal on metal contact, right? When they have a little pool of uh, thermal paste in the middle there, that can actually freeze over and crack when they're below 1 million degrees Celsius. You know what I'm talking about? So to them, that contact patch area, it has exponential value to them, right? When the colder you get, the more important it becomes. For those of us on ambient temperature, I figure it's kind of a nothing burger, but that does not stop companies from capitalizing on the idea and trying to monetize it. Basically, creating a problem and then selling a solution to it, if you will. Now, I believe Der Bauer kind of made his own frame, but this one is actually a thermal right, I believe, 12th gen frame. This one kind of clamps down over the entire CPU evenly to get rid of that bending issue, right? This was like six bucks on AliExpress. I bought a whole bunch of them just in case it does work really well so that I can use my builds, right? But we're gonna test to see if it's kind of a snake oil situation again. So we're gonna go upstairs to the test bench. We're gonna apply a thin layer of thermal paste, regular contact on it. Then we're gonna run a Cinebench, see the temperatures, then we're gonna take it off. And then we're gonna look at the thermal paste, like evenness on the IHS, right? Then we're gonna wipe it off. We're gonna put this thing on, do it all again. Then we're gonna relook at the thermal paste application to see if this actually does make a difference, if it's worth picking up for you, right? Then we're gonna do a bonus round. I'm gonna go lap an actual IHS, a stock one. So then we're gonna do those tests all over again to see if maybe you need to lap the CPU on top to get more of a benefit out of this thing. 
a little bit of sandpaper and elbow grease if that makes this thing work better. Good, right? All right, so here we have our test set up here. It's a 12700K today. I'm just kind of working on this little project on the side, but it should work really well for our purposes here. 360 mil AIO, 12700K, delitted. Okay, so we are running the 12700K at five gigahertz all core here. So let's hit run and then we'll check hardware info for the highest core temperature. And then we'll also check the package temperature. So yeah, it's already looking like 85 Celsius. How much power is this pulling? 1.32 volt. Yeah, so she's pulling 200 watts right now, right? So these temperatures are already very good for 200 watts. Keep in mind the CPU is delitted, right? So that's why the temps are good. But maybe look at these deltas. Maybe that will improve with the ILM, right? We're not sure, so. Yeah, so max was 86. The, high, the hottest core was also 86 on a few of them with uh, the stock operation. All right. Okay, so here on the stock ILM, it's not, mine isn't so much pooling in the center where the latch is, but there's definitely more paste in kind of exactly where the die would be, like in the, like kind of in the center from top to bottom here. So that's how you can kind of tell that it's not flat, right? It's not, the paste is not even across the whole thing. Over here, it seems to be fine on the actual cold plate, but over here, yeah, the center up and down does have a little bit of a groove in it, right? So, so now let's take this thing off, put on this bad boy and do it all over again. Also, don't mind the glue on the sides here. This is just to keep the um, IHS in the center because it's delitted, right? But um, it's, it's cut away so it'll apply even pressure on the whole thing, right? So just ignore that, right? But yeah, look at this. I mean, it looks like it fits dead on. So that's uh, that's some pretty tight machining there. That, looks, that actually looks really nice too, I must say. All right, let's screw her down. Yeah, that looks sick. I mean, you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't see this while it was in the computer running, but I mean, for that for that PC prawn, that looks pretty sweet. Yeah, you can also tell um, it's definitely sticking up out of it, like maybe by one or two millimeters, I would say. So it's definitely not in the way in terms of the cold plate whatsoever. It's it's, it's quite well designed, I must say. So everything seems to have worked fine here. We still got both memory channels, so no no funny business with the clamping pressure. XMP still loaded, five gigahertz. Everything seems to be okay so far. So let's run Cinebench here. Okay, let's click this bad boy and hope for the best. Ah, oh yeah. Look at that. So like, what, three degrees better? That's not even that bad. I wasn't even expecting that, to be honest. Two? Three? Yeah. How much power is it pulling? Yeah, yeah, 200 watts. Uh, we got 83 on the package. Look at that. So two, yeah, two to three Celsius drop. That's pretty cool. Also, keep in mind, my CPU is delitted, though. I don't know how it would be on a stock. Maybe we'll have to try that after. But yeah, let's see the hottest core here. 84, 85. Oh, so one degree Celsius on the hottest two cores here. And then a couple of other cores dropped by two Celsius. So, uh, maximum power, 86. Um, okay, so I guess we can say one to two degrees Celsius here. Oh, yeah, so I guess it kind of... Seems to be about the same. Like instead of it going vertical, it's kind of going horizontal a little bit here. It's also kind of really hard to pull it up without kind of moving the paste around. So take that with a grain of salt, right? But if this IHS does kind of have a groove in it, then a freshly lapped one should solve that problem. So let's go throw this in now. Okay, so now we have the lapped IHS in there with the stock ILM because we have to see how much of a temperature difference or if at all just lapping the IHS does without 
you know, the frame. So let's do that next, get a temperature reading. All right, let's get right into it here. See what just a regular old lapping job on 12th gen does. Is it going? Oh yeah. Holy, wait a minute. Oh yeah, 200 watts. Holy shit. That's insane. Well, uh, huh. Wonder why the results are so good. That's almost like an eight Celsius drop there. That's odd. And we still we still have that uh, 10 core 10 Celsius delta between the cores as well. Let's see here. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, it just finished. So we got package temperature maximum of 79. So we lost what did we lose there from 86 to 77 degrees Celsius? Look at that. And then our hottest core 79 79 so we lost five to six celsius just lapping the uh the uh, ihs there i that's i mean that's uh yeah i didn't expect that at all okay well it's strange this ihs here must have had like an insane groove in the center of it right um you obviously can't see it but yeah this has now become a IHS lapping video because those results are insane. Okay, let's go do this. All right, so here's the paste spread on this one. This actually looks much better. The 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 paste collection on the outside here just means I did a shitty uh, lap job. Like the sandpaper was scraping more on this. Like it just it means the sandpaper wasn't flat. That's what that means. But you can tell on the inside here the paste kind of pushed out. Right, so. The latching mechanism, I mean, maybe just a bit in the center here. Is, is there's a little bit of a pool. Um, really grasping at straws here, but I would I would argue that overall, just the center being the contact point now is where that temperature reduction came from, right? So let's install this bad boy now and see if it gets even further. All right, this is the last one. So let's click run see what happens let's go uh yeah looks 205 watts 79 80 79 yeah this looks exactly the same as as the stock ilm it seems uh max package 78 core 79 yeah, this looks literally identical to the stock ILM. Um, eh, yeah, this is 100% identical. So, all right, well, that's kind of disappointing. I was expecting more than that. But actually, you know what? Even, even though it's disappointing, um, not really unexpected. This is more of um, an extreme overclocker problem, not a average normie overclocker problem, right? Okay, so this ended up being the same again. The center definitely is the highest point here. So the frame itself didn't actually equalize the pressure at all. Um, I mean, it's maybe like it may it kind of kind of concentrate more on the edges up here on this side instead of kind of over here in this corner. So, but again, it doesn't matter. The temperatures were the exact same. So the the lapping did all the work here, not the actual ILM itself. So again, guys, this thing is for liquid nitrogen use. You get nothing out of it. They're basically just selling you snake oil with this thing. It's 100% snake oil. Don't worry about it. Okay, so what's the verdict? Meh. I mean, this is a, this is a classic example of a fear-mongering sales product, really. Get news headlines everywhere saying how the stock ILM is bending the IHS and all that shit. Um, create product, sell product. This product is definitely targeted towards the hardware OCD guy. Um, I can't tell you how many people in my Discord are like, who has the 12th gen ILM frame? Like they're asking me how and where to buy this thing before even seeing content about it or without even actually looking at my review of this thing, right? So with this thing, you get about a one Celsius, 
at most difference, right? Why is it all these people are going so gung-ho over this thing? It's because that's what marketing is. Tell you that there's something wrong with your computer and then sell you the fix, right? Well, I mean, to be fair though, it really only was six bucks. I mean, the shipping costed more than the damn thing itself, right? So, uh, oh, actually, for that six bucks, it comes with a cool, like, Allen key thing and a big tube of thermal paste. So this is probably worth more than the frame itself. It's super interesting, but if you're considering one of these things and you're not using liquid nitrogen or any of that stuff, don't worry about it. You're much better off delitting, using liquid metal on the IHS, lapping the IHS even, that was crazy. You know what I mean? Um, so at the end of the day, do not worry about it. Anyway, guys, if you like saving money, hit that subscribe button, do all that YouTube SEO stuff, like, share, subscribe, comment down below if you got one and what your results were. And uh, hopefully I saved a bunch of people money on another FOMO product that that is not applicable to 99.9% .9 of us. Anyway, guys, I will see you in the next one. Talk to you later.